day. From Nissan Stadium in Nashville, Tennessee. This is Madden NFL 21. We'll see Ryan Tannehill and the Tennessee Titans taking on Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. Being located in the music city, this building has hosted a lot of great music acts since its inception, but this is what she was made for, NFL football, and that's what we have today in Nashville at Nissan Stadium. The whole of downtown Nashville likely still reverberating with the sounds of the Titans taking the field a moment ago. They're ready for football as their Titans are set to match up with the Baltimore Ravens. kicker Steven Goskowski ready to do the honors and we are underway in Nashville and this will make it into the end zone and this will go as a touchback and they will begin things at the 25 the Ravens offense going to work and as usual it's Lamar Jackson the former MVP of the league at the helm allow me a second here to gush because in his college career the only player in NCAA history to rush for over 1,500 yards and pass for over 3,500 yards in a season. And he did it twice. That's pretty good. That's really good. <laughs> Yet he only won the Heisman Trophy once. Jackson on first down, rolling to his right. He'll run it. Oh, he faked it with a juke. Now he's got some room. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Able to find a lot of empty space there, picking up the first down at a 21-yard gain. Now those are the ones that hurt defensively. You do everything right. Excellent pressure, good coverage downfield, and then he slips out the back door and turns it into a nice gain. Big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. First carry for the former Buckeye, J.K. Dobbins. And he works his way forward for about four up to the midfield strike. By Kevin Byers. These two teams, of course, the Titans and Ravens, met in the postseason a year ago. And, and really, along with the Titans win the previous week in Foxborough, it was one of the shockers of the postseason. The Titans, a sixth seed on the road. The Ravens, they were the top seed, riding a 12-game win streak and coming off the first round bye. But where well, that game was all Tennessee, they led 28-6 at one point, ultimately winning 28-12 and sending them on to the AFC title game in Kansas City. Dobbins going to take the handoff on the option. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. Well, every now and then, we have to let a cliche fly apart there. In this case, what do they say in the NFL? Your best ability is often your availability. This is an extremely durable kid coming out of Ohio State. Carried the ball every time they even thought about running it. Wore down defenses and able to play big runs late in games. J.K. Dobbins going to Baltimore, an absolute perfect fit. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. The Ravens get a new set of downs, give them 17 on that pickup. It is fun to watch the big man work the middle of the field. How about that post route there? Did an excellent job of getting his head around to look the football in and gain significant yardage. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Check 
Off the play fake to Dobbins. Here's Jackson. Sliding out of the pocket. He's going to take off with it. He'll get the first down and more inside the 20. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it to combine 33 yards. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you got to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Option play, and they'll hand to Dobbins. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Sometimes I think these defensive tackles get a little bit of a bum rap. We just see them as big guys that eat up blockers for others to make tackles. Oftentimes they're quicker than they get credit for. And this time he uses quickness to make a play. a slight detour on what's been a strong drive here second and 11. Jackson gonna tuck it down on the option and they go the wrong way here knocked back to the 20. That's a big loss of three and it brings up third down. Well, he's had success running the football on this one, and that's undeniable. But that time, the defense was on to it. Your partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. A couple of plays sent them the wrong way, and now they face a third and 14. From the gun, it's Jackson. They'll roll him out right. He may try and run for this. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. He was able to get away earlier in the drive, but apparently all the time they put in practice finally came to the front, didn't it? They remembered their lessons and found a way to contain him when he took off on that one. So on fourth down, here's the Ravens Pro Bowl kicker, Justin Tucker, out onto the field. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. Tucker's kick is good. And the Ravens strike first at threes in. Ravens three. Titans nothing. So the opening drive does yield points. Maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. Six figures every year, yeah, earn that. Cut the front of this line is where my turn that. Tucker now following the main field goal, set to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Here comes the Tennessee offense, and you see Ryan Tannehill leading them out. A terrific athlete, started at wide receiver before becoming the starting quarterback at Texas A&M and also took his studies pretty seriously as well. He was a biology major at Texas A&M, planned to become an orthopedic surgeon, but being the eighth pick in the NFL draft, that paid just a little bit better. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 27. Out of the gun, he'll throw. Space to maneuver at the 40. He finds Corey Davis. And he'll finally be taken down just shy of midfield. A good pick up there at 22. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. play and they're already just shy of midfield 
Now a first carry for Derrick Henry. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. With his size, it often takes more than one guy to get him down, but if you can at least slow him up and the reinforcements arrive, you have a chance to get him on the ground, and that they did that time for a loss. Behind the chain, second and 13. Tannehill. He's got a first down and then some inside the 40. And finally down at the 36-yard line. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. Well, remember, they tried to give him the ball and let him run on the last play, but I think the light bulb went off in their play caller's mind, and this time they get it to him the more conventional way and is much more successful as well. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 36. Tannehill going to turn and give this to Henry. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 12. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. And his pass incomplete. He was trying to get it to A.J. Brown that time. But now it's third down. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target. But he was covered quite well. And that one's incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Out of the gun, Tannehill. Open man is Cameron Batson. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down. They did. Big time pickup for them, and now... I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone. Because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. It makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. From the gun, here's Tannehill. He'll get this complete to Batson. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. My next teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. He's so good at that, isn't it? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, 
I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. His passing's been on point on this drive, hasn't it? Been very accurate, gotten the ball downfield, gained nice chunks of yardage, but now, in this situation, the field is really condensed, partner. So if he's gonna throw the football, it'd have to be pinpoint here. As I was gonna ask you about that. Field shrinks, has to be sharper, but it's been a good opening drive so far. Now they just wanna see if they can cap it off with the bell ringer and put it in the end zone. They'll try and run for it with Henry. And the Titans are going to have a first and goal. It's some good running there. Gets him down to about the two-yard line. Knock it on the door. He'll get six on the ground there, and it'll be second and goal coming up. And, Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. Trying to punch it in with Henry. And he gets in. Touchdown, Tennessee. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Titans have taken the lead. And Charles, he's able to dive in there in a short yardage situation. Just find a place to get to the end zone. Didn't matter where it was, but once he did, used his nose for the end zone and dove in. Now Steven Goskowski on for the extra point. Man, this is up and good to make it 7-3. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And Derrick Henry able to finish it off with a touchdown run. Goskowski now after the touchdown. He'll send this one away. And this will make it into the end zone. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. At their own 25-yard line. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive dead with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Off the play fake. Here's Jackson throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Trying to get it to Willie Sneed there. But it's going to be second down. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes. But the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. An incomplete pass leads to second and ten from the 25. <laughs> throwing again. Jackson over the middle here to Brown. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. Jackson from the shotgun looking for Sneed and it's intercepted. Desmond King picks it, and he will return this one to the 30-yard line. That throw, Charles, over the middle of the field, and a few too many bodies in there got picked. That's a normal situation, too, isn't it? No matter how hard you try and spread the field sometimes, there's always going to be a traffic jam, it feels like, towards the middle. And if there's any type of a missed throw, or maybe the ball's tipped, or just too many bodies in the area, an interception can result.
So first and 10 now from the 30. Derrick Henry. And he's got about five yards as he's taken down right at the 25. He has a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Pernell McPhee. Give him the credit for the sack and a loss of 14 yards. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. So third and long after the sack, tough task for Tannehill and the Titans. Now it's Tannehill. Henry's got it, out on the left side. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. Fourth down, here's Steven Goskowski for the Tennessee field goal. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And it is good. Oh, that one looked to be in trouble the whole way, but it does get over the bar. And they push the lead up to a touchdown now at 10-3. So good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coach is always talking about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point, or in this case, a field goal. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. Fielded in the end zone. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. set at the line for this next drive and following the interception just any interception are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no you just throw that out the window I think you are I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go ah totally didn't affect me just go ahead and be loose with the football again you're going to take care of it but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all still want to attack we'll see how they attack them here Ten three, our score after one here on EA Sports. Ten, Ravens three. Play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. And here's Jackson on the option. And able to rip off a big 
chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. It's another first down as this time they get an even 20. But I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Jackson with a handoff to Dobbins on the option. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. But typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. An option handoff here to Dobbins. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. He's brought down. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. on third down. Just one for three thus far. This time it's third and three. They'll try to run for it with Dobbins. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee. And that means fourth down. The ball's still a few inches shy of the marker after the three-yard run, so now a little soul-searching on fourth down. Pass up a field goal attempt. It would have been a 45-yarder. Now they'll go for it on four. Dobbins going to take the handoff on the option. Oh, and I think he went backward. He did. The Ravens go for it, but come up empty. And as a result, it'll be Titan football on the turnover on down. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop them short of the marker. Oh, someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack that thing up. They're going to feel awesome going to the bench after that big play. Titans offense set to begin the drive. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on the lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Keep it with Henry on first down. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. 
to throw on second and six. Tannehill, and he will find Davis. That's complete. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Seven yards there and a first down. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is? to not play too much zone. Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game. And it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. The Titans on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Give him the third down conversion. Five yards on the play. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. 48. 48. Now Tannehill. He'll get this one complete. That's A.J. Brown. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six at the Ravens 29-yard line. Tenth carry now for Derrick Henry. And he is met Derek at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. Third down. He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. Throwing on third down, Tannehill. And right side, Henry's got it. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They get six on the pickup there as the drive continues. That's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. down carry for Henry yeah, give him four yards there it'll be second and six when you find that kind of yardage you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier and guess what you're gonna go back and tell your offensive coordinator I'd like to keep carrying it thank you following the pickup of four here's second and six Here's Tannehill. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And the Titans are going to be set up with a first and goal here as the tackle made at the nine. The Titans efficient passing on this drive. There's another first down. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker. And you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, the ball gets tipped in the air. Because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. Thank <laughs> you. 
They'll try and run for it on first and goal. He pushes forward for maybe three down to the six-yard line. He was brought down by... I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're not doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. They'll give Henry another shot. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop ball right around the five here brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. From the gun on third down, Tannehill. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Corey Davis there to make the grab. And the Titans find a way to stretch their lead. Precision, precision, precision. That's the definition of it right there. Great pass, great catch for the score. Yeah, people talk about arm strength all the time. Well, if you're not precise and you're not accurate, your arm strength really doesn't matter. We saw a little bit of everything with that throw. Extra point try for Goskowski. It's up and good, and that makes it 17-3. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told. And it ends with a Tennessee score. Koski now after the touchdown he'll send this one away and he'll be tackled just shy of the 25 over first and 10 at their own 24 yard line now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field and last time this unit was out here costly turnover and then that turned into six points they've got to make amends and how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football <laughs> offense take care of the defense defense take care of the offense that didn't happen on the last possession this is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team yeah we'll see if they can recoup and recover jackson and the ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 24. and they'll begin by running the option And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Touchdown. Lamar Jackson, 76 yards. And the Ravens are able to show off their quick strike ability. Well, we've certainly seen this before, CD. No one can quite electrify a crowd like Lamar Jackson. And really don't know what else to say other than that was special right there. I think you pretty much said it all. But I go back to what you said about electrifying a crowd. He's also Justin electrifying Tucker us, and we're calling the game. This guy's simply sensational. And it's up through the goalpost. It's 17-10. So they hit pay dirt on just one play. The long run, the scamper, and a very nice scamper into the end zone for the touchdown. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Taken about seven yards deep. And no return here for Evans as they will bring this out to the 25. 
Here comes Ryan Tannehill now leading his offense back out there. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes, but right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second Let's quarter. Go. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll throw from the gun. And yeah, that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. That's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. This is Henry. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance and guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. And they'll run the option on third and short yardage. And they got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. Second quarter action, 156 remaining. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. He'll get this one complete to Davis. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. So first and 10 now from the 30. To throw is Tannehill. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball, because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. The loss of three on that first down pass play. Now second and 13. Here's Tannehill into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by Marlon Humphrey. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. That was a really nice interception. I think it illustrates the differences between playing man and playing zone. When you're in man, all you're focused on is the receiver in front of you. But when you're in zone, you're allowed to read the quarterback's eyes and go to the ball. That's exactly what happened on that play. For the football back over to Baltimore and J.K. Dobbins. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well, or do you mix it up more? I think you mix it up more, try to loosen things up. Get the defense to react to other people, other plays, but don't forget about it. That's your horse. You know, Secretariat lost twice in his career. <laughs> so educational. That's very true, kids. Look it up. After the interception, here's Jackson. Flushed out right. He's going to take off with it. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Jackson on first down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts 
As the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. A gain of 13 yards. First well, we've seen Jackson already have success in the first half running the football, and he gets good yardage on the ground again there. I mean, how? I know it's a $64,000 question, <laughs> CD, but how do they contain him better? You have to win against the blockers ahead of you. If those guys even occupy a defender for even a half a second, then Lamar Jackson is gone. You've got to take those blockers and move them so that you have clear vision of Lamar Jackson, and hopefully you can hem him in. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. Rolling to, and he's gonna lose a yard or two. Taken down behind the line. Daquan Jones fighting his way home to get the sack. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. Made his first, this now from 42 yards out. And Tucker's kick right there, it's good. And that will cut this lead back down to four now. It's 17-13. Ravens, 13. So yes, they'll still be down going into intermission, but the deficit is now made even smaller, very manageable. Yeah, and if nothing haywire happens here in his last couple of precious seconds, they will go into the locker room with a nice bounce in their step, having gotten a little bit closer on the scoreboard. Time for one play on offense. Seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. This taken in about four yards deep. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half. He'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. So we reach halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw Derrick Henry muscle his way through a strong first half. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Titans hold the lead, and they'll get the football first as the third quarter gets underway. Taken about seven yards deep, and no return here for Evans as they will bring this out to the 25. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And have hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? 
beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys, they're tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at their 25-yard line. He'll start with a give to Henry. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Derek Wolf there on the tackle. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. Looking to throw on second down. Tannehill, quick slant to Brown. 30, the 20. Touchdown, Titans. A.J. Brown, 75 yards. And the Titans are able to extend their lead. And sometimes those slants, they can be so tough to defend after the catch. It, it, it just happens so quickly. And really, what we'll gets set up there is how quickly everything happens. Ball's out of the hands of the passer in a hurry, and he just takes it and goes. And he went all the way into the end zone. Goskowski for the point after. And that one pushes the lead up to 11. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. Goskowski now after the touchdown. He'll send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. At their own 26-yard line. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. And their halftime hole now even deeper. And they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger. But no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing. And try and get back to where you were to start the half. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 26. He fakes the give here and looks to throw. Looking left side, and it's complete. Jackson. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. first down. It's worth noting when you talk about Jackson's running ability, the Baltimore wide receivers had just over 1,400 receiving yards combined last year. And, Charles, that was the fewest yards by a wide receiver group in the NFL since 2011. And, partner, I expect that number to go up this year. Last season, Lamar Jackson got very comfortable with his tight end group. In fact... He had one tight end and went to the Pro Bowl. But I think now, because of his ability to run the ball, it'll bring defenders closer to the line of scrimmage, and you'll see more big plays from the wide receivers downfield. Another catch for him there. This one good for 11. First down. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Man open left side is Brown. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans' 33. Offense. Come on, you idiots! 
Too far downfield, something those linemen have to watch out for, and that time it costs them. Still second down. Second down, here's Jackson. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessful. Here's Jackson on third and long. They set up the screen for Dobbins. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. For plays like that, Charles, no doubt, they're just going to continue to fuel this crowd. And this defense is already playing well, but it also feeds on the energy of that crowd that you're talking about, and that takes them up to another level. Right now, they're playing really loose. They've got the lead, and what a nice stop they just made there behind the line of scrimmage. Here's Sam Cook now. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. The Titans take over first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. The Titans offense now, they get ready to do battle again here. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Tannehill and the Titans come up now first and 10 at the 20. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. He'll get this to his tight end. It's Jonu Smith. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. They'll run it again with Henry. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Seven yards there and a first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. They'll run with Henry. And across midfield he goes into Raven territory. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to help feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. From just shy of midfield, Tannehill over the middle complete. It's Brown. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 27-yard line. A game there of 21 yards. That was a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup.
On first down, Tannehill trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Patrick Queen, and his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. Baltimore about ready to go on offense. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll drop to throw. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, 14 yards. As a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field, right in the heart of the defense. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Jackson going to run. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't. And at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. So he didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. Throwing on second down. Jackson. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun, Jackson. Caught right side at Sneed. Yeah, he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first Sam down. Here's Sam Cook right now down. as he'll kick it away for the second time. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. At their own Here's Tennessee ready to begin this drive offensively. And in enemy territory last time through the interception. We'll see what they do on this drive. Can't wait to see how it alters what they decide to do in play calling. Do they continue to throw the ball? Do they want to lean more on the running game? It'll be an interesting sequence of plays that they've got coming up. Does it often affect the play calling with the interception? How, how much does that change what you do? I think it does depending on why the interception was thrown. Sometimes it's just a matter of the defense made a great play, so you continue to come back. But if it's on you, if the offense just doesn't have the confidence, if they're a little bit shaky, maybe try and take the pressure off and run the ball a little bit. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner, than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. Henry. A gain of three, second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. 
from the gun. Here's Tannehill. He'll get this complete to Batson. Tannehill, four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. It's a gain of four. Brings up third and three. Tannehill. He gets it to Brown. Complete. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Tannehill to his top target, Brown, for a Tennessee first. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode. Really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 47. A shotgun handoff to Henry. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. Like any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame, get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Tannehill with a play fake to Henry. He'll throw instead. And his throw is incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. An incomplete pass on second down leads us to third and inches. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Give him seven yards on the play as they do pick up the third down conversion. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. First and ten, Tannehill. And that would not to be. It's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time has now run out on this third quarter of play. Back now in Nashville. It's the Titans. They've got the football. They'll be looking to extend their lead here as we begin the fourth quarter. They come up second and ten. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. Henry's got it. Out on the left side. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. The Titans on third down. They've been flat getting it done. Eight for nine to this point. Here it's third and three. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. He hit his first, this one from 40 yards out. And the 14-year trusty veteran able to knock it through, and that will get the lead up to 14. Ravens 13. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown call would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close.
Steven Goskowski. Goskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. 27 yard line. The Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if some guy, there are going to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Jackson on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for his tight end, Mark Andrews, there. And now it's second down. He looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. Let's go, let's go. Second and ten. Here's Jackson again. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Hollywood Brown, the intended receiver. And that takes us from second to third down. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure, or do they play coverage on this down? The Ravens on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. This is third and ten. He'll buy some time right. He can run for it, and he will. He'll wind up getting four yards there on his own, but it also brings up fourth down. He certainly had plenty of success running the ball, and right now I'm getting the sense that he's looking to take off and run every time he steps back to throw it. But they did a nice job there collapsing on him and holding him to a short gain. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Titans will be backed up deep to begin the drive as they take over first and 10. A.J. Brown and the Titans getting the ball back here. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. Now there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. Three down, three down. They'll run on first down. It's Henry. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for a pickup of 15 for Tennessee. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Now it's Henry. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. 
line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Brandon, this is clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Second and 11 now. Tannehill, his throw incomplete. Jonu Smith, the tight end, is intended receiver. But now it'll be third down. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. The Titans on third down. They've been tough to stop. Eight for 10 so far. This is third and 11. Tannehill. They set up the screen for Henry. And he can only manage to get this to the 45-yard line. Well short of the first. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. What you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. Here's Brett Kern now. Always a good sign when your first punt comes in the fourth quarter. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. The Ravens take over first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news, but this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. He'll set up the throw from the gun. That's complete to his running back, J.K. Dobbins. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. That pass play wound up for negative yardage, so here's second and 11. From the gun, it's Jackson. Over the middle here to Brown. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. You know, Lamar Jackson last season, the first NFL quarterback with 3,000 or more passing yards and 1,000 or more rushing yards in the same season. And we've seen both of those talents on display here today. We just saw another completed pass. And everyone knew coming out of college he could run the ball. But for some reason, we didn't analyze it throwing the way we should have. I think every time he completes a pass, he says to himself, take that, evaluators. You guys really missed the boat on me. On first and 10, it's Jackson. And that'll be complete to Dobbins. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. You got the big lead defensively willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. And Jackson throwing once more. He gets this underneath to Dobbins. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see. Yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Seven yards there and a first down. But correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Jackson's throw on target to Willie Sneed. 
A gain of six there on first. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it. And he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there as they were able to connect. And he's going to keep it here. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Jackson from the shotgun. He'll find Dobbins out of the backfield. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. They'll contain him to just four, second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You tackle them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And that's going to be incomplete. Jackson's pass incomplete on the throwaway. It's third down and six yards to go. get to the 26 for a first. This is third down. From the gun, Jackson. That's taken in by Duvernay. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it, it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They're going for it with Dobbins. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. First down now, but that clock rolling. Off the play fake to Dobbins, here's Jackson. And this will be incomplete. Jackson, Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. You normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. An incomplete pass leads to second and ten from the 25. <laughs> to throw again. Jackson looking for Andrews again. He's got him this time. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Jackson to Andrews on that one. First down, Baltimore. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Operating from the gun. Jackson Escaping the pressure right. And just shy of the goal line as he's out of bounds right at the one. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know, there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. <laughs> to throw again on second down, Jackson. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. About a half yard from the end zone, third and goal. From the gun, 
Jackson. And this is caught for a touchdown. So hang on now. Things just got a little bit more interesting here in the final minute. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, uh, yeah, you know. Doesn't you got, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> And that'll cut the lead down now to a touchdown. That drive a long one, spanning 15 plays. And it's capped off by the Baltimore score. So there is still time, a little over 50 seconds to go, but this becomes a critical onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a cap on this one. Now, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it they do actually recover the ball which is what we saw here i just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number kind of like when the coaches tell us well when you score on special teams 93 percent of the time you win the game i'm still waiting to see that number is empirical down Henry now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play the first down run got five here's second and five and here's Tannehill to keep it. Fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as he'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. it to the 32 good enough for a first down Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play from the 32 now here's first and 10 Tannehill to a knee, and that ought to be the final act of this ball game. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about <laughs> doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So this one, a Tennessee Titan victory. And it wasn't really always pretty. They had their bumps and bruises. Really, both sides did. But they did what they needed to do at home to get the win. Yeah, they really had to grind this one out, didn't they? Because nothing came easy. Every snap was a major league brawl. They had to win at the line of scrimmage, win downfield. They got all those things accomplished. But to win a close one like this... You know, every team wants to be physical. We, we've heard that a million times, right? But those who are mentally tough, those are the teams that you have to deal with in the playoffs. This was that type of a game.
That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL.